bit of a different video today. I'm actually riding over to Blake's house to do a bike check with him on that hardtail that he built. Now, it was suggested to me to make the video. I'm, I'll say, I'm on a fence about it because he's not even used a jig for this thing. He's basically made it by eye. Gonna be an interesting day and uh, hopefully we'll get out to ride the thing. Um, let's see what happens, shall we? Okay, so we're with Blake in his uh, in, the, in his bike cave, which is his garage, with, with the masterpiece. <laughs> Look, at um, it. I've got to say, even just looking at it up close, yeah, it looks a little messy. But how cool is this? That Blake's made this in his garage with no prior experience in in welding bicycles or designing bikes. Uh, so from the start, what's the bike's name? And uh, just tell us a bit about your design process. How, how on earth did you get to this without even a, having a proper jig or anything? Okay, so it, I got to this point, I built a side hack on a, another bike. And at that point I was like, Fap, you know what, I could build a bike because I don't do welding at all. And I thought, hell, I think I can just weld some tubes together. How hard can it be? And I, I did it all in here. I basically started off with a drawing and um, on here, on my big, on my garage door with some paper on it. and. Uh, I drew it out one-to-one -one scale, and um, I do love my Nukeproof Scout a lot. But it's a 27.5, and I wanted a 29er. So I thought I'd go with a 29-inch wheel bike hardtail. So you, so you kind of base this around what the Scout was? Yeah. Geometry-wise? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So I've, uh, I've done AutoCAD drawing before. Yeah. I, I did uh, college, did yeah. it for four years. I was a draftsman for four years, well, actually six years for a company, oil company, and um, for, I just just remembered all the drawings and how to read drawings back then. Yeah. So I just went on websites. You know you get all the details, the information when you're looking for a bike and it goes all the way down to the bottom of the page, you got all these numbers and lines and stuff. Yeah. I looked at that and I was like, actually, I actually don't know what I'm talking about here. I don't know what I'm looking at or what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, it went from there. So I drew what I thought was right on here. Okay, so on what is, Basicoro, what does that mean? Basicoro ah, is Shona. Bicycle. Yeah, means bicycle. <laughs> yeah, in Shona awesome. from Zimbabwe, yeah. Yeah, right. What's it made from? What, this, sort of, what sort of metal is this? This is mild steel. Okay. So I did a bit of research before I started getting into it because you can go into a massive rat hole with the materials you need to make a bicycle. Because if you want to make a really nice lightweight bike, which this is not, uh, you go for Reynolds tubing, you yeah. go for titanium yeah. or aluminium if you're good at welding alloy, yeah. uh, which I'm not. So I spoke to a guy, which I'm a big fan of, Alec Steele on YouTube. He's a guy who makes stuff and he's a big fan and I'm a fan. And I asked him, I just reached out to him and I was like, dude, I just want to make a bike. What tube can I use? And he was like, just go down to your local merchant and get mild piping steel tubing with a seam in it. This has got a seam. Yeah. And uh, I went to Devizer Steel just down the road. And I just went in there and I was like, oh, I want this size, that size, this size, cut this much. And how did you get to the idea of using like the thinner top tube, the bigger down tube, the huge seat tube on there? <laughs> so where, where did the sizing ideas come from? Weight, because I know steel's very heavy. Yep. So I went with weight in mind. I wanted it to be a little bit lightweight because you could just make it all one size everywhere. You yep. could make it all this but I don't think it'll be strong enough down this down tube or the top tube or the seat tube. Obviously, I needed a thicker one for the seat tube because of my dropper post. Uh, so that's that, a 34.9, that's yeah, a that's, massive dropper. That's the bigger one. But Crank Brothers do three different sizes, yeah. so I took all three different sizes. <laughs> and this was just like a gamble. I went into this place and there's loads of tubes in this rack and I just put in my droppers into, into each internal diameter of these pipes yeah. just to make sure which one was snug. And sure enough, this inch and a half was the perfect size for the biggest one. So you didn't have to ream it or anything, it just happened no. to be the right size? happened to be the right That's size. That's complete fluke. That is complete <laughs> fluke. I was like, that was the biggest headache. I was like, how the hell am I, I'm, I'm going to have to shim it out. I'm going to have to do something, yeah. probably put two grooves and just crunch it a lot more. Yeah. But no, that's, yeah, that's where oh, that right. went. And I thought down tube being 
The down tube is the same thickness as the seat tube. This one's a uh, 20, I've forgotten already, 26. Yeah. And um, yeah, so. I mean, I, I got so many questions to ask about this because I've never built a bike and actually it's something I've always wanted to do. So there's a few things I kind of know about, but um, don't get me wrong, I've not done this. So head tube, I can see that is from, <laughs> well, I'm guessing that's from a DMR dirt jump bike or something. That is a DMR yeah. bolt. Okay. Yeah. So you know they had yeah, made the, sort of trail the suspension bike. full sus, yeah. yeah, 26 inch it was. Uh, old front triangle, because yeah. it had a, you know, for a a suspension. concentric pivot yeah, rear end on there. Yeah. So I, uh, this was my brother's bit. He he had it laying around, and I was like, dude, have you got the set? Have you got that old front triangle? Because he got given a newer one for yeah. a longer version, because he was a taller taller than me. So I just butchered. I took the head tube off and the BB. I was going to say because that's that's where the concentric pivot was. Yeah. You could turn that into full size. <laughs> Not <laughs> this one, but coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I butchered that because that is pretty much the two things that I had to use from something else because I wouldn't be, I can't machine that yeah. and I can't machine this. So why so, not just- So was your objective it? literally to just, anything that you can do here? Anything you that- You didn't want to outsource anything. I didn't want to outsource nothing. Nothing on that's, here was- That's quite a feat actually, just doing this yourself at home. It was an absolute head scratcher. Yeah. Like going, I just put this workbench thing, this works work thing, that was set in the middle of the garage. Yep. And I was back and forth from my workbench to the drawing to the workbench to here with no jig. My jig was this. And that plate with those two steel tubes yeah. welded to it, which is the rear axle. Okay. Because there's obviously there's all of it's important, but the most important bits I would say is the rear, just to make sure it's like the right width. Yeah. So one four eight. Yeah, so a proper boost. So it's a proper boost hub just to fit in what I had from another bike that I butchered. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my head tube. That was the biggest headache. And I started with the front triangle first, thinking it was the f the easiest one. And oh, then the rear. So, so you pick your tube set, you've, yep. you've got your head tube and your BB from other bikes, which I guess takes out a lot of the complication. Um, in case you're not aware with BB, you can get either press fit types or th um, threaded, like screwing type. Um, so that's great, already having those parts. Okay, so I've got my head around a lot of things, but what I can see from here that you might not be able to at your angle is your stays actually, they're bent quite well. Now, thank you. <laughs> at a glance, <laughs> the thing is with bending stays, you normally need like a pipe bender. It's quite a specialist bit of kit, isn't yeah. it? So how have you managed that in here? Yeah, well, you can get like really crazy pipe bending ones for frame building, which I didn't have. So I went to just a local store and bought a plumber's pipe bending tool <laughs> for copper pipe. Okay. Just for doing inter like copper pipe's a bit softer. Then. Very soft. <laughs> Hence why you can see these little dents right here, which obviously this is a 16 mil pipe and the pipe bender went down to 15 mil. So I just jammed it in there. <laughs> just, just to get the bend. And that took me so long to get. Um, and the biggest headache was is trying to get tire clearance. Obviously I got loads up the top. Yeah. But down here I did because you had to consider your chain ring your tire clearance, yeah. so the actual pipe that goes to the BB goes in, then out, then bends back. So this one yeah, okay. goes, we well, can't see it because I've got this on there, but well, I can, I can see it's got a little shape. S yeah, in yeah, it, yeah. just so I've got clearance for that, which I had to measure this chain ring. Is that 32 or 30 on there? So it's a 30, uh, I can't even, 34. That's a 34. Okay, so bigger than I thought. Yeah, yeah. that's a 34. And um, so I had to get that. And then what I did on, this table, I put a piece of paper on for the jig. I drew the actual width of this tire, which was a, it's a 2.35. Yeah. Um, I put it in there, so I drew that, and then I would bend the pipes and then put it on the drawing, just to make sure I had enough clearance all the way through here to my chain stays. Okay, yeah, um, and what I hadn't See, said, actually the dropouts drop on the back. Yeah. What have you sourced those from? So, and that, again, homage to the, DMR was an old sponsor. Uh, yeah, okay. This is Saracen uh, ALX, the jump bike uh, dropout. Okay, yeah. It's a vertical dropout, yeah, but a horizontal, horizontal adjustment. adjustment. Yeah, yeah. And that's quite smart actually. So it's got a disc mount built onto it. So I guess that took the hassle away of having to yeah. put a disc mount on. Yeah, and weirdly, that's I, quite smart. Weirdly, when I had this, I kept loads of them. I got a few upstairs in the loft. I kept them. I was like, one day they were going to come in handy. Yeah. I don't know what. 
but they will come in handy. This is why I always encourage people to hoard bike stuff. Yeah, be a hoarder when this it comes to bike stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I have. Sometimes I throw too much away a little bit. But yeah, so I just cut six mil plate and then I just drilled some holes and mounted the got nice gold uh, drop ups there just to make sure that was another bit that saved my bacon. Because making this would have had to been like to a T. Yeah, yeah. Because if that's bent, everything is just going to be Out bent. Your line. gears is not going to work. Yeah, yeah. And this is all in one piece, the drop out. I got some silver ones over there. Yeah. And that just, um, yeah, that saved me. So that's that, good. the BB and the head. Yeah, so there's quite a few shortcuts you can make actually in doing this stuff. Yeah. You um, can source from other bikes. If you, you can go to a junkyard and find an old bike, steal and cut out your, your dropouts, your yeah, BB. Yeah, you can repurpose a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even I, on I don't 26 ever six thought... inch frames, you can just chop them yeah, up because they're mean, cheap. I don't ever thought about how you'd approach it from scratch, but actually it's, it's a really smart way of doing it. Mm, um, tell us about your, like, your hose routing and the bottle cage mounts and all these sort of bits. How did you plan these out? So before I started welding and getting too excited and just wanted to look at making a frame, you have to, well, I took into consideration that I couldn't do this welded up. If I weld this front triangle, I wouldn't be able to get in there with a drill bit and start yeah. welding and cutting and yeah. getting this. So I wanted to put a dropper post on just because it's more tech and a, more of a challenge. So I decided I cut the this seat tube to, sh to the size I wanted and measured where I wanted to put this what do you call this exit piece for yeah. the cable? Exit routing, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't want it too close, but I didn't want it too far. And to be honest, it was actually too close. Yeah, it, but could, it could be a little bit yeah, higher. Yeah, it could have been higher and it just curved onto the yeah. end tube. But... Likewise, with the uh, bottle cage bolts, they, those, uh, those are nuts I just welded in there. I drilled, the, I drilled holes into the frame so yeah. the bolt could go all the way through and get a lot more oh, okay. meat yeah. on it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's two little holes in there enough for the bolt to go through, weld them on, and because I wouldn't be able to get in there to do all that. And these are M6 and M5 nuts. So it's <laughs> external oh, routing, it's, it's yeah. external routing, but internal, because to get this out, you're gonna have to cut your hose. <laughs> yeah. You break hoses because yeah. you feed it through, and I've drilled every single one out. Yeah. So you wouldn't have the, the threads, the threads inside, yeah. chewing That's up your cable. That's quite cool, like that as well. Yeah. Um, you obviously, you missed out with uh, some of them here. Yeah, because I didn't. I thought if I welded nuts on here, it would make it a bit more, a little ugly. Yeah. I, I, so I just a little hack with a cable tie and yeah. a, a washer. Ah, uh, needs must. Yeah. Yeah. Just did that. Okay, so this is already coming together quite well. But tell us about the actual welding and stuff. So the the, the gear you needed to sort mm. of prep the frame tubes and do the welding. And I kind of, I kind of want to get to a rough price because let's face it, yeah. You're not going to do this just to save money, but you probably can actually save money by, if you could be asked, making one yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's Well, the whole thing, cost-wise, yeah. with welder and all the bits and pieces, is around rough £500 for okay. a project that so you could do in the So that's including steel and stuff, yeah? So that's including steel. So the steel, you could probably source cheaper if you wanted to shop around or yeah. get online, but you just go to your, support your local shops and stuff uh, that was about a hundred pound okay. for the steel um, and then grinding discs that, that was my best tool out of the whole thing was my grinder and you'll go through them like and you go through those yeah, yeah especially cutting the six small plate down yeah. here i went through <laughs> three discs just to cut these two out and then grinding pads like a sanding pad yeah. fluffy disc one that's to cut all my uh because then you know they're not just buttered up you yeah you have to notch them. the tubes and stuff. yeah you've yeah. got to notch them out to get it in there um, yeah, so about five hundred pounds with mask, welder, gas. So I guess at the end of that, though, you're left with a, a welder, the mask, um, you've gas, whatever you'd yeah. replace. So technically, if you spent another hundred quid, you can make another frame. Yeah. So yeah. actually, five hundred quid, but that's pretty reasonable, isn't it? Yeah, to it's make pretty your own good. Frame? It is, yeah. But if you don't want to have a welder in your garden, like, you can just rent them. Yeah, sure. So you go to your local rent, like us over here, we got. TSG okay. or ITS. Yeah, there'll be a few places around. In the yeah. UK, so you can just go and, you know. Well, that's a good shout. Okay. Rent them. So, so how first. much time did it take once you prepped the tubes to do your welding? The welding, to be honest, didn't take that long. The the whole, pr the, all the time comes here. Yeah, the planning. From This was the, the yeah. planning is the most craziest head scratching process. And 
well uh, bending and cutting and measuring making sure you like you've you've got your jig i didn't have one my jig was on a flat piece on the table with some yeah, magnets. So, so that must present itself with challenges because you think on a frame you've got all sorts of different alignments oh, to, to factor in. <laughs> a lot. And everything comes off the centre of your BB. Yeah. Uh, it, the welding didn't take long. The one thing I did, would point out is if you are going to be welding, you don't just start welding loads on one side because heat bends stuff. It'll, it'll torque it to where the heat goes. So when yeah. it starts to cool down, it will pull in. Yeah. So I was tacking, so one tack, tack one side, so to keep it kinder in line. Yeah, okay. Kinder. So you don't just do all one side, all one side, because your whole frame's just going to twist. Yeah. Which I learned, I watched a lot of YouTube videos yeah. prior to doing so. People tack them together yeah, first, so tack, yeah. tack, tack, make, and then let it cool down. And if you are going to put some heat, let it cool down, and then weld the other side. And that if it is out of line, you can use the heat by welding one other side, to bring to the tube it. back, yeah. yeah. Kind of like turning a wheel, really. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Bit like that. But there's a lot going, yeah. It's, it was a headache. The head tube was a nightmare. Dude, I'm I'm really impressed. Like, I... obviously there's some ropiness when you look at the thing. Um, My welding's not the best, because I don't have any... Oh no, but, but this this is the whole cool thing about it. I wanted to have this bike on a tech channel, because it's not a pristine bike. It's not an artisan bike made by a really bespoke frame builder that's got a history in it. It's made by Blake in his garage. Like. <laughs> in, that, to me, is one of the coolest things about it. What's it ride like? Great, yeah, nice. To be honest, the geometry, mm. good. I, it's <laughs> really good. You should sit on it. It would be too small for yeah. you, but you would get the gist. Well, so you, we but, obviously basing it around the Scout, which yeah. you, he's famous for loving his Scout hardtail. Um, so yeah, I can get an idea. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's just like, he likes to walk sideways. Okay, all right, so that'll be an alignment thing then. Yeah. <laughs> no jig, man. Let's, let's get out on the trail and have a little look and see what it's like. Is there... Do you want me to jump it? Well, clearly, yeah. <laughs> but let's just see. We'll, we'll get the woods, have a play. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's more about the satisfaction of someone's actually bothered to make a bike at home in the garage. That's got to encourage someone. Like, I actually really fancy a go at doing this myself. Yes. Like, I've you can borrow that well. I've never been asked before, but now actually you see the fact you've made something pretty pretty cool. Cheers, uh -huh. mate. Right. It's uh, yeah, good. It's just something I wanted. Let's to hit the do. woods, and then we'll have a closer look at some of the things that might stand out to us. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> Okay, so I'm out for a little ride with Blake, just to see how the bike is. I think I found out why he calls it the crab. Uh, have a look at the frame alignment on the back here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but uh, it's getting quite close here. It's slightly on the one, can it, Blake? It is a little bit. Does it, does it affect it much when you ride? At first, when I got onto the bike, yes. But then afterwards, I got used to it. Look at this bit, I'll show you. <laughs> so I guess that's what you get for uh, not using a proper jig. <laughs> Blake and I have been riding on the trails for a little while now and other than laughing a bit at the fact that the back end is clearly not that well aligned, the bike seems to ride really well. I mean, I had a quick go on it and obviously it's tiny for me, but it feels surprisingly good. And I, I don't think I've given Blake enough credit for the fact that he's literally built this in his garage with no, like, there's, none of this is done correctly. This is all done from just trying to figure stuff out himself. I think it's amazing. I think this is a great concept for anyone uh, to try and try and do at home, essentially. And actually, I feel quite inspired to do something like this myself. Um, in fact, I will at some point. I think I'm going to make a frame. But I want to chat to Blake a bit about this about this back end and how this has happened. So, I'm just trying to get my head around this, right? So, you pretty much had an idea to build the bike. Yeah. You chuck this in together using someone else's head tube, someone else's bottom bracket. Yeah. No jig. 
Um, it seems to ride pretty well. I mean, to be fair, you can ride anything pretty well, but um, it does seem to ride all right, considering that the back end is completely on the fish. Yeah, that's where it's got its nickname from. The crab. The crab, it's right. It's a bit, a bit of a sideways, it's a sideways action. It doesn't feel sideways, but when you look down, it's not straight at all. But that's because I didn't do it, have a jig and yeah. hey, did it in my garage. Do you know what, all things considered, like the fact that that has been built with no jig or anything, I think that's astonishing, dude. Oh, thanks very I mean, much. I mean, it's messy it. as hell, but... Yeah, well, that's it. I've left it like raw. I've yeah. like given it a clear coat, so it's going to stay like that forever. Yeah. I think I'm going to leave it built up and just admire it. Because today I was quite anxious riding it that hard. Yeah. It's the hardest I've ridden it, and it's it felt good. It didn't look like it was holding you back in any way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it must feel really cool riding a bike that you've literally built that bike. Yeah. Not, I don't mean building the bike, you know, yeah. built the frame. But, but the thing, you know, riding it, but doing a wheelie on that bike, man. <laughs> you wheeling something you've made. Yeah. Oh, that's, I love that. So what would you say then to, to anyone else? Well, actually, firstly, yeah. what would you do to improve on that? And then what would you say to any of the GMBN tech viewers that might think, oh, do you know what, I'll have a go at that. So Mark II, I reckon a jig is needed to get it yeah. perfect. Uh, I'd probably make the jig because buying a jig is so much money. And clearly worthwhile if you're a frame builder, but if yeah. you're just making a few at home. Oh, that could be another case. I could go to an actual frame building place down the road and make one like you're supposed to. But I don't think there's any fun in that. And he has, behind the scenes, been really nervous about riding it today because yeah. he's genuinely not known uh, how it's going to hold up off-road. I have no idea. I know you've ridden it, like done some long rides, yeah. but not, not actually through the woods no, and stuff. So. Not like that on rough yeah. stuff. I thought the BB was going to fall out. So, but yeah, it, it's still here, it's still alive. Hey, yeah. I, I think this is a great project, and, and I reckon one or two of you might have tried building a Ooh. bike yourselves. Uh, whether you've done it with someone like the Bicycle Academy or Tom Sturdy or whoever, um, or you've done what Blake's done, and done a ghetto one in the garage, let's hear from you. Uh, we'd love to chat to you about it, put you on a show and stuff. And if you think I should maybe approach building a bike, yes. let me know what you think I should build, and we'll, we'll see what options there are. Yes. Um, I've had a great day, Blake. Oh, dude, thank like, you so much. It's man. been wicked fun. I've Stoked laughed my ass off yeah. following you. <laughs> Stoked I showed that. you it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, let us know what you think of Blake's bike in the comments underneath. And don't forget, uh, we're going to put links to his videos so we can see him build the whole thing from scratch. And uh, yeah, um, a bit more detail in there. And we'll see you in the next one. See, ya. see you later. The ghetto crab. I like it now. <laughs> the ghetto crab. Ghetto crab. Yeah. Got like a goldy looking yeah. chain on him. <laughs>